We're going to look at relative and absolute cell references in this tutorial. And I'm going to explain first what a relative and an absolute cell is. Well, an active cell is the cell that you're entering the formula or the value into. So I'm after picking a cell here, I'm after selecting cell D6. So that's now the active cell. The relative cell is the position of the cell that you wish to include in the formula in the effective cell. So this cell will always move relatively to the active cell. And to show you what I mean, what we're going to do is say equals the sales price multiplied by the unit price. So the relative cell, the unit price here is the relative cell and at the moment this is also a relative cell. So this is one cell to the left of the active cell. So the relative position is one cell to the left of the active cell. The relative position of the sales price is one cell to the left and two cells up relative to the active cell. So I'm going to press control and enter. Okay, now if you fill that formula down, and we'll just fill it down one, and we've got a value error. So I'm going to press F2. And what has happened here is we still have one cell to the left multiplied by one cell to the left and two cells up. So when we filled the formula down, the cells moved relative to the active cell. This can cause complications when you're trying to fill a formula down and be efficient when you're entering formulas. So the way around this is to use an absolute cell reference. An absolute cell reference is a locked in cell reference and it depends on the absolute reference. This cell will not move relatively in comparison to the active cell. So what you do is you actually lock a cell reference in. So when you move the formula, that cell is locked in. It doesn't move relatively to the way your active cell is moving. So let's have a look. I'm just going to delete this formula here and I'm going to go back up to sales value and delete the formula from sales value. And I'm going to start again. So equals one cell to the left. So when we pull this formula down, we always want the first cell in the formula to be one cell to the left. So that's going to remain relative when we're pulling the formula down. So we don't need to absolute the cell reference. And we're going to multiply this by the sales price. Now it's the sales price that we want to fix. We want to lock this reference in because when we fill this formula down, we want this cell to remain in place. So we need to make this absolute. And to make something absolute, you press F four. And when you press F4, you will see these dollar signs come up and you can toggle between the, the absolute references, reference types that, that you can select. So the first one that comes up when you press F4 is a dollar before the C and a dollar before the four, a dollar before the column letter and a dollar before the row number. When you have a dollar before both the column and the row, it will lock the cells in both directions across the rows and down the columns. If you only have a dollar in front of the row number, then the formula is copied down the row and the cell is locked in that direction. If you have it before the column number, when you move across the column, then the particular cell is locked moving in across the column. So I want to lock in cell C4 when I pull the formula down the rows. So in this case, that means that I need the dollar before the actual row number. So we press F4 because I'm pulling it down the rows and I'm going to press enter. And I'm then going to just fill this formula down. I got to jump to the last cell and I'm going to press F2. And when I press F2, we will see that the formula is still one cell to the left relative to the active cell, but I've locked the formula going down the column or down the rows, down the columns. So I've put it in front of the row number. So let's just recap here a little bit. A dollar before both the column and the row will lock the cells in both directions, across the row and down the columns. A dollar only before the column letter, when the formula is copied across the columns, 
the cell is locked. If a dollar is only before the row number, then when the formula is copied down the rows, the cell is locked. So we've pulled this down the rows, so we have it down the row, or locked in on the row number. I'm just going to press enter there. Let's have a look at another example that we have here. And what we have here is we have we want a monthly increment of 10%. So we have an initial figure of 100 and every month we want to add on 10%. But we only want to enter the formula into one place and we want to be able to drag the formula across. So we will say equal to initial figure that we want to start with. So that's one cell to the left and we want to multiply that by 110% because to get a 10% incre increment it is a 110% of the original value. So I have 110 in this cell up here. So we need to lock these figures in and we need to lock both figures in we want to lock. Okay because we want to lock this cell in because we're always multiplying it by 100%. But what we want what do we want to do here? Well this cell we want to move to February when we're doing March because so, we want a 10% increment on February. First cell, the B15, is always going to be relative to the active cell. But this cell here is going to be locked in. Now which way are we pulling the formula? Well we're pulling the formula across the columns. So that means we should put in the dollar sign on front of the column name. So let's press F4 and F4 again and F4 again and that's pulled it in going across the column so let's pull this formula across let's press F2 and we will see that we still have one cell to the left relative to the active cell but we've locked in this cell up here when we've pulled the formula across the actual column. Now I'm going to scroll down slightly and we're going to look at this table and if you can master this table you can master relative and absolute cell references. This is a multiplication table and what we want to do in each cell is 1 multiplied by 1. In this cell here it's going to be 1 multiplied by 2. In this cell here it's going to be 2 multiplied by 1 and in this cell here it's going to be 2 multiplied by 2 and so forth. And what I want to do is enter a formula in here and I want to be able to copy it across the table and for the, the correct cells to pull in all the time. So down here we're going to have 9 multiplied by 9. But up here, we're going to start with 1 multiplied by 1 and then copy the formula into the rest of the cell. So let's begin. Equals 1. Okay, with this 1, what are we going to do? Well, when we pull this 1 across the row, do we always want it to be one cell to the left? No, we don't. We want to fix this 1 in here. So we're pulling it across the column. So we need a dollar in across on front of the column name. Okay, so when we pull it across, we want it on front of the column name. But when we pull it down, do we want it, the row locked in? No. When we pull this down, we always want this figure, one, one cell to the left. And we're going to multiply this by this one up here. With this, when we pull this across the column, do we want to lock this in? No we're always going to want one cell above the active cell. So when we're in this cell here, we're always going to want the 3 multiplied by the 1. So when we're pulling this across the column, we don't want to lock it in. When we're pulling it down the row, we do want to lock it in. It'll not always be one cell above, it's going to be locked in to this 1. So it'll be 1 multiplied by 2, 1 multiplied by 3, 1 multiplied by 9. So we need to lock in the row because now we're pulling it down the row. So we'll press F4, F4 again to lock in the row and I'm going to hit Control and Enter. Now let's copy this formula down and it looks like it's worked copying it down. We'll press F2 and we'll see we've one cell to the left multiplied by this one up here. Let's fill this formula across the table and we'll see down here 81 we know is correct, 9 nines are 81. Let's press F2 and we can see that 9 multiplied by 9 is 81 and the correct cells have pulled in. 
practice that table. If you can master this table, you will be able to master relative and absolute cell references. Thank you.